Welcome to CEF Insights, your source for closed-end fund information and education brought to you by the Closed-End Fund Association. Today, Bob Bush, Senior Vice President and Director of Closed-End Fund Products, and Eli Pars, Co-CIO, Head of Alternative Strategies and Co-Head of Convertible Strategies, both with Calamos Advisors, will discuss the environment and outlook for convertible securities and Calamos's approach to utilizing convertibles. Certainly worth mentioning is that Calamos was just awarded the honor of being designated by Refinitiv Lipper as the best overall small fund family for 2022. Congratulations to Bob, Eli, and their colleagues at Calamos for that achievement. Bob and Eli, we look forward to your discussion. Well, thanks, Diane. Eli, Calamos started out in 1977 as a convertible manager, effectively a pioneer in the asset class by managing those securities for both institutional as well as retail investors. Today, Calamos manages approximately 43 billion in assets, including approximately 15 billion in convertibles and over 10 billion in seven closed end funds. With this long history of managing the asset class, what are the key characteristics of convertible securities and how can this benefit investors? Thanks, Bob. Converts are a very interesting way to get equity exposure with a little less risk. So step back and learn a little bit about what the structure is. So convertibles, first and foremost, are a bond. They're typically issued at par with a five-year term and redeemable par. But they also have embedded in them the option for you to convert into the company's stock. And it's your option. So it really only comes into play when the stock moves up. The combination of the two, the option and the bond, give you the ability to get equity exposure when things are going well for the company, but you become a bondholder if things are you know, less well and protect to the downside with that bond component. The end result you get when you actively manage these in a portfolio, you get equity-like returns over a full market cycle with less volatility. Thanks, Eli. And how diverse is the universe of issuers in the convertible space with regards to industry sector and also geography? Yeah, so while convertibles tend to work best for growthier companies, we see all kinds of companies in the convert market. You see a lot of growth tech and healthcare and consumer companies come to the convert space, but you also see some bigger cap companies. It's a pretty good mix. And geographically, while it's somewhat dominated by the U.S., with the U.S. being about 60% of the market, there's a big convertible market in Europe. There's a big convertible market in Asia. There's a meaningful convertible market in Japan. So, it, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to look at the global convertible market. And Eli, obviously, you know this. We've seen exceptionally robust issuance over the past two years with over $300 billion of new deals coming out in 2020 and 2021. And I, I would imagine as we get into a rising interest rate environment, it may become even more compelling for some issuers to access the convertible market. Are the expectations for this trend that will continue in 2022? And what opportunities does this dynamic present to investors of convertibles? Yeah, we've had nice growth in the issuance in the convertible market over the last couple of years. And expectations are for a good year this year as well. You know, obviously, we've had a little volatility in the first quarter with everything going on around the world in really volatile times. Convertibles, like other asset classes, don't see a lot of new issuance. But we think there's a fair amount of pent-up demand on both the issuer side and the investor side that uh, should create a healthy market going forward for the rest of the year. And the issuance really kind of is helpful in multiple ways and converts. It expands the opportunity set. It brings new companies to the market that didn't have exposure to in the convert market in the past. And it allows you to rebalance your portfolio. Convertibles are great securities that give you good upside participation and good downside protection when they're around par. But if they work out and the stock's up 50 or 100 percent, then they can look a lot like equity. At that point, we want to rotate out of the more equity sensitive convert into something closer to par with better convexity. And the new issue market makes it easy for us to do that kind of rebalancing. Now, obviously, Eli, we've had you know, a recent sell-off in financial markets, certainly equities and convertibles as well. But I would imagine you're finding some attractive valuations in convertibles in this market. And where are you seeing some of the best opportunities right now? Yeah, you definitely had a correction, which has created some opportunity in the market. 
you know, we're probably seeing the most opportunities in the U.S., but also quite a bit in Asia with the pullback that we've seen, in, particularly in the Chinese markets. Europe is a little trickier right now with the war still raging in Ukraine, but we have some attractive selective exposure we like in that region as well. As we know, interest rates continue to be low, but the Fed has begun shifting to certainly a less accommodative stance. Inflation has become a concern. We've got geopolitical issues out there, and that's created uncertainty. How does all of this position converts in the current market? And what is your thinking for the outlook for the rest of 2020, 2022? We think this creates some interesting time to allocate to the convert market. We think converts make sense because of their way to get equity exposure with lower volatility, but they make sense as, as a strategic part of an asset allocation. But right now, with the pullback we've seen, the volatility in the market, it's an interesting tactical time to add to a convert allocation. It's tough to buy equities when you've had this kind of volatility, and converts are a way to get some equity exposure or additional equity exposure in your portfolio and sleep at night. So we manage three convertible closed-end funds currently. How do you see the allocation to convertibles best position in an investor's diversified portfolio? And for an investor that's more income-oriented that may want to own them in a leveraged closed-end fund construct, how does that optimize the convertible holdings in that convertible, uh, in that closed-end fund construct using leverage, of course? Yeah, we think, you know, it's an interesting time to allocate to converts. In a levered vehicle like closed-end fund, the convert's ability to manage volatility kind of protects you a little bit and takes a little of the edge off the leverage. And the leverage in the portfolio, while it's pretty modest, you know, 20, 30% leverage, it does allow you to get a little bit of extra return in the portfolio and produce some income that's attractive to certain investors in the market. That's great. Very helpful, Eli. And obviously, we've managed convertible closed-end funds for almost 20 years now, so it's certainly something we were uh, conversing in. Eli, thanks for taking the time to share your thoughts with us today. Greatly appreciate it. Happy to be here, Bob. And we want to thank you for tuning in to another CEF Insights podcast. For more educational content, please visit our website at www.cefa.com. The Refinitiv Lipper Fund Awards, granted annually, highlight funds and fund companies that have excelled in delivering consistently strong risk-adjusted performance relative to their peers. The Refinitiv Lipper Fund Awards are based on the Lipper Leader for Consistent Return Rating, which is a risk-adjusted performance measure calculated over 36, 60, and 120 months. The fund with the highest Lipper Leader for Consistent Return Effective Return Value in each eligible classification wins the Refinitiv Lipper Fund Award. For more information, see LipperFundAwards.com. Although Refinitiv Lipper makes reasonable efforts to ensure the accuracy and reliability of the data contained herein, the accuracy is not guaranteed by Refinitiv Lipper. Refinitiv Lipper Fund Awards is a copyright of Refinitiv. All rights are reserved and used under license. Opinions and estimates offered constitute our judgment and are subject to change without notice, as are statements of financial market trends, which are based on current market conditions. We believe information provided here is reliable, but do not warrant its accuracy or completeness. The material is not intended as an offer or solicitation for the purchase of any financial instrument. The views and strategies described may not be suitable for all investors. This material has been prepared for informational purposes only and is not intended to provide and should not be relied on for accounting, legal, or tax advice. References to future returns are not promises or even estimates of actual returns a client may achieve. Any forecasts contained herein are for illustrative purposes only and are not to be relied upon as advice or interpreted as a recommendation. The securities highlighted are discussed for illustrative purposes only. They are not recommendations. The risk of investing in convertible securities includes the potential for a decline in value during periods of rising interest rates and the risk of the borrower to miss payments, synthetic convertible instruments risk consisting of fluctuations inconsistent with the convertible security and the risk of components expiring worthless, foreign securities risk, equity securities risk, interest rate risk, credit risk, high yield risk, portfolio selection risk, and liquidity risk.